beginning, it was real easy to label us. We were a Van Halen knockoff. We were an Aerosmith knockoff. Unintentionally, but that's kind of what we grew up on. White Snake, uh, Dio, that kind of stuff. Well, I guess uh, a little uh, Leonard Skinner thrown in, if, if that makes any sense. Um, now, I don't know. It's, it's evolved. I took a little time off when my son was born. Uh, we've all kind of grown up. Um, we're by no means contemporary. We're still very heavy at times. But I think we're not as angry as we used to be. You know, we can deal with the subjects at hand, topics. We have a little more grasp on life. And we're not know-it-alls by any means, but um, when we do a ballad, it has it makes a lot more sense. It uh, has a lot more continuity. We know where we want to go with it. We don't want to get down dirty and nasty. We just kick it like we used to. Um, we don't try anymore to write like, say, what's happening on the radio, or write like this, or write like that. When I came back um, after that time off. We didn't decide, well, we want to write like this, or we want to write a ballad, or we want to write this. Troy would take off on a guitar part, or I would take off on a guitar part, or um, Dan would take off on something, or Bo, I mean, any of us, Cozy. It was just, it was like the old days. In the very beginning, when we first started writing, we didn't try to be anything. That happened, just by the cover tunes that we did. Um, but it was like that very first meeting, we just took off. and. What everybody felt is what they played. What I felt is what I sang. And it's neat. It's, we're still very heavy. Very heavy when we want to be. But I think the, the whole thing makes a lot more sense. Revolver Records deal was, was real exciting for the band. Uh, it was just after the release of Change in the Weather, our fourth record, and it does get discouraging being turned down by the major labels and being written letters that say they love your music and it's great, but not quite what they're signing. Uh, and after, at that point, probably seven, eight years as a band, it, it does get a bit discouraging. Um, but yet we plotted on and kept playing and selling our records and through the efforts of Anthony DeSoma who is our legal representative here in town, uh, Tony DeSoma as we know him, uh, was doing some shopping work for the band and got a tape to Revolver Records. Revolver Records has been around for about 20 years in the UK. 
uh, and distributes their records throughout all of Europe. Uh, they've had many big bands over in Europe, a lot of big punk bands on the label, and they're distributed via Sony. Uh, so they're, uh, they're a major independent label over there, and since they're tied in with Sony, it really constitutes a major. Uh, Tony solicited that deal, and one day, uh, I believe it was the 1st of January, 1996, or sometime in January, we got a fax from Revolver. Uh, that they had heard our music, were excited about our music, thought it had a market, and they wanted to offer us a deal. Uh, this sort of a deal is known as a licensing agreement. Since we had already produced the record, it wasn't a record deal, and as far as them needing to record the album, uh, being that they wanted to license an album we already had. Uh, so basically, after a couple months of negotiations on the terms and some of the fine print on the, on the contract that Tony DeSoma goes through, uh, we came up with an agreement that was that was very good and in October uh, Revolver Records then manufactured and released our record in the UK and all of Europe. Uh, the record has only really been out for about four or five months now and we've gotten a lot of press. We've been in Kerrang! and Metal Hammer and some of the big magazines over there. Uh, sales are up around probably 5,000 units right now which is a moderate to slow start, but since we haven't toured yet, uh, the label kind of agrees that's about what they would expect at this point. What they now hope to do is pick up our next record and hopefully get the band over there to tour. Uh, Revolver Records feels that if we'd come over and play in Europe and we could swing that to figure out how to get that done, uh, that the sales would take off accordingly and uh, turn into a bigger mover over there. Uh, keeping in mind that your success with a record label is based solely on how many records you sell. And if you don't sell records, you'll not long be with the label. Uh, but it's been a good relationship so far, and I think it's just beginning at this point. They're very interested in the fifth record that is in the can now. And so we hope to have a dual release for the first time where the record will come out in Europe and America at the same time, uh, gain more press, and we have discussed with two or three agencies a tour in Europe, but nothing's been final yet, and we just got our fingers crossed that the money comes together and we can get over there and tour. Mama, watch your side. fifth record, which though isn't released, uh, is recorded, it's in the can, and that was very exciting because once again we had a producer, this time a little bigger name producer, Mark Berry. He's worked with the likes of uh, David Bowie and Yes and Billy Idol and uh, a whole host of people, Deep Purple. Uh, he actually studied with George Martin, the, the Beatles producer over in England. Uh, for several years as a producer over there and he was very excited about our music off the fourth album he wanted to produce the next record and we actually this is the first record recorded outside of Indiana uh, actually done in New Jersey at uh, Broccoli Rob recording facilities a five-star facility with hot tubs and and makeup booths for videos and all sorts of great stuff and uh, it was interesting then, even though we know how to put out a record, there's people that know more about putting out records, and it was fun to work with a person like that. Uh, we were worried that, that with this uh, big time producer, he might really have us under a whip and chain and be very uh, hard on our music, but to our delight, it turned out to be just fun recording, 
and he was very cool in the studio and usually nine times out of ten if we liked the track he liked the track uh, it was a very simple process and uh, went quickly um, and hopefully this record will be released uh, sometime early summer Troy didn't want to put a date on it but I'd hope no later than July uh, we'd see that and hopefully get some more radio and everyone will call in the radio stations get them to play it and you'll like that one as well as the first several uh, this album is right now on the desks of record executives at Sony Records, MCA Records, Arista Records, and now Interscope Records. Now, all of our records, we've been through the shopping process and have a wall full of turndown letters and rejections. We've been re rejected by Warner Brothers Records six times, in fact. And uh, so we're kind of waiting on that process to happen again, and maybe one, one of these people will pick us up. Uh, in the next few weeks and if not you'll be seeing it probably out on surf records in the next month or two and uh hope you go to your record store and buy it I went through a period where I had to have that major record deal. <clears throat> then I saw and knew some bands that got those major record deals, and it didn't mean a thing. Maybe they got their face on MTV if they were lucky. They were all good enough, better than most bands that were on MTV at the time. But it didn't mean anything because you're here one day and you're gone the next, and then we went, we went through a period where we said, hey, Dan started his own record label, we can be on that label, and we can sell enough units independently to make a living. Um, now this is speaking totally for myself. I now have a family, you know. That's a big part of my life. That's the biggest part of my life. I've, you know, Ma Kelly is always gonna be another big part of my life. Um, probably till the day I die. But I am now back to, it's very hard to maintain a job because you can't make a living in the club circuit anymore. Even if you're playing cover tunes, um, you make more money doing that, but you know we're trying to sell our music, so we're doing all our own stuff. Um, I am now back to, I would like to have that major record deal to try, just to try. Let the masses decide whether or not Mark Kelly's music is good enough, not just the pig-headed record industry people, you know, the people who have everything to gain and nothing to lose. Let the masses decide. I can take a yes or a no. I just want to know. You'll never know My body happy to all My lack of confidence You'll never know Call on me so we can have a call on my soul But you'll never, never, never You'll never, never know It's all your soul See my nation Ashes, ashes, and dust to dust The right to pray was handed down by wise old men Freedom of today, my 
Now that the, the fifth album is done, um, like we talked about before, you know, we, we actually had time off to where, you know, we got to spend a lot of time writing, so I think now actually things are fresh. We've got a lot of really good people um, with Doug Diamond and, and Scott Quinn and, and uh, Rich Lee, you know, doing a lot of things for us, taking a lot of the burden off the band now to where we've had the opportunity to do a lot of writing. I think we're fresh enough now we've got the dates coming in. So um, we're just now getting back into the playing thing again, which you know is still a lot of fun. I think the excitement's still there. Um, with the thing in Europe now, you know, hopefully that uh, change in the weather, you know, is selling over there. However much that is, if we got enough airplay, maybe we get lucky when this one gets released. You know, hopefully it gets a lot of airplay. Maybe somebody catches on and hears something off this album. You know, maybe that sparks them buying that album and. You know, the back catalog thing could work great, you know, for the band. But, you know, we've you know, we got to get something out there. Um, we've got great distribution, you know, all the way down to the south, you know, Alabama, uh, Georgia, Florida, you know, um, some parts out west. It would really be cool to see things, you know, pick up here now that we're back out playing again and then something click in Europe, you know, because I think that everybody really wants to go to Europe. You know, I think that would be a lot. Of, it'd be great for the band. It, it, you know, be but just to go over there and have you know different cultures and stuff like that, bigger stuff. You know, I think would really be cool. So you know, that's definitely something that we're shooting for. Um, actually, it would probably be more exciting to do it, you know, as an independent band as it would be to you know sign everything away. Not that we're totally opposed to that, but. Um, you never know, it's getting late in the game. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so you never know what's going to happen. I think, you know, the bottom line is, you know, that we're still Ma Kelly. Ma Kelly's still together and still playing and people are still coming to see us play. And, and you know, we'll buy the CDs. You know, it's obvious because they're still selling. So, you know, hopefully as we, you know, keep going on, we keep picking up, you know, new fans, appeal to a wider audience. And, <laughs> blah blah blah. <laughs> I'm gonna follow you. 